this is what we have to resort to. <laughs> What'd you say? This is what we have to resort to. <laughs> so this is a trout farm. Um, bait and rods are supplied and whatever you catch they gut, fill it and you buy. Alright, let's go see what it's all about. Yeah. Alright, the pressure's on now. What this is know? Will. <laughs> so hey Will. How you doing? So the way it works, free to fish, just yep. make sure you keep what you catch. Yep. Um, at the moment we've got trout and salmon. Cool. Salmon's 32 a kilo, trout's 24. Yep. We'll gut and gill everything before we weigh it too, cool. just so you're not paying for the gut weight. Um, today, six ponds you can fish out of. Yep. Mm -hmm. We've got three on the left side of the farm, that's where we keep all our salmon. Yep. And we have three on the right, that's where we keep all our trout. Right. Can you sort of know what you're chasing for the boats? Or... Salmon for me. Trout for me. No worries, I'll run you through them all. <laughs> but down at the fountain, uh, this is our small salmon. They're not really that small. You're looking anywhere from about a kilo to a kilo and a half. Yep. Mm -hmm. So if anywhere from that $30 to $50 range, that'll feed four or five adults, no worries, to fish out of there. You follow that road up the middle there, yep. just turn left around the bend, that's your median salmon, they're yep. sitting anywhere from a kilo and a half, two and a half kilos, and left of that your real big gills, uh, anywhere from sort of 60 to 120 at the moment. Wow, up there. Yeah. nice. For your trout, plate size ones behind you, yep. uh, anywhere from 8 to $15 at the moment, yep. generally like a, a one or two person feed. Yep. Up past your yellow slide there, that's your larger mixed trout, essentially this pond, everything's just a bit bigger. Uh, Sweet. So you're looking anywhere from 15 to 35. Yep. And then you do have the golden trout out the back, essentially just an albino rainbow trout. A uh, little bit more fat content through the meat though, so quite tasty. Mm -hmm. uh, anywhere from sort of 10 to $30 at the moment. Right. Cool. So is any of these ponds easier to catch from? Because, yeah, they you know, we did put... this, this one here just has suicidal catchings, <laughs> mostly. That's been a little bit tricky with um, oh, that's not for you, with then. a warmer with a warmer yeah. weather. Mm. Although we've had a couple of cooler days and a bit overcast today, day, yeah. so the fish have come back on the bite yeah. a bit a week mm -hmm. ago. You, couldn't catch a thing so um, <laughs> but most of them are fishing pretty well at the moment cool. we did put 150 kilos up at the goldies there this morning so there should be plenty in there that, that awesome to eat too, so. no worries. excellent it's just a soft palate yep. real easy to use just goes straight through the middle just Done. sits on the tip of your hook you go around the bend they tend to break off so yep. just keep them on the tip uh, the rod's real simple too just a bamboo stick line hook Yep. Uh, also those, just make sure you, when you're casting out, get as far out as you can and just make sure your bait's not sitting on the bottom. Okay. And hopefully yep. you should get a bite. Please. Sweet. Excellent. Now, last thing, you do get to give him a little dong on the head once you've caught them. Yep. Real easy, just hold him up right on the belly, yep. uh, just because you don't want to hit him on the side there. Yep. You want to hit him on top. Yep. You just aim him above the eyes and it's just one solid hit. Just like that. Done. Perfect. Go straight in the bucket after that. Bit of water it goes a long way. In the bucket yep. too. Bit of pond water just scoops them out. Just keeps yep. the flies off them. Yep. Keeps okay. them nice and fresh. And then when you're happy, you can just run this bucket through the little end sliding door yep. in there. Yep. And on in, we'll chop them up. Show you all the guts if you want to see that sort of stuff. Cool. Perfect. Why not? Sweet. Sounds cool. all right. Excellent. Sounds right. good. No worries. Okay. All right. Yeah. All your sauce awesome. too. Here we go. All right. They're waiting. Don't know if you can see this on the GoPro, but wow. Does it feel weird with the, just a pole? Yeah, it does, eh? Is there any real technique, I wonder? Oh, just not to keep it on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, okay. As far out as you can. Very peaceful. Honey, that's a big rod. Okay. Like, I think I've got to really, it's going to sound bad. I think Go I've on. got to really jerk it harder to get the bait, <laughs> like to set it. To hook it. Yeah. Yeah, otherwise they're just nibbling it. Yeah. Nibbling the end and not 
pulling hard on it. Yeah, you know, sometimes you need to pull hard and just don't let them nibble the end. <laughs> Oh yeah, and we got it. Wowzers, hold it up. Oh, let me knock him first. Yeah, let me come around. Warning. That's it. He's still not there, I don't think, honey. Yeah, he's just. Wow. You got him in the snozzer. Show me, hun. Yeah, we're in the sun. Go around here. Go around here. You're in the sun. Hang on. Wait. Very good. How you going, babe? Patience game. What are you fishing for? Uh, anything but, can you hold that up? Because all you're showing is my belly. <laughs> uh, anything but. Oh, look, 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 look. Yeah, get ready. Oh. Something like that. Anything. <laughs> anything but a tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I need bait. Oh. Probably, why, probably why she hasn't caught anything. There's no bait on the freaking hook. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been trying for over half an hour and this excuse the friend catches it All right, one more whack hun. get him out of the water though Just grab it out of the water that's it yum Right. Do you want me to pick it up, Adam? No, Are you I'm scared? Just, no, I'm just trying to find the bloody hook. It's in his mouth. No, it's hooked out. Oh. Can we get that relative too, please, mate? I can fill it this one. Yeah. That one's just oh, that's fine. Yeah, 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 no dramas. So the best way to cook the... Um, Trout. Trout. Sorry, I went off the foil. Yeah. Put a butter and lemon in its belly cavity. Yeah. Nice bit of salt and pepper as well. Um, I usually put a little bit of garlic or onion in mine just to give it a nice caramelised yep. taste. Um, the more you cook the fish, the less fishy taste you get. Do you guys want the eggs on the view? 32. No. No. Cool. What do you do with all this? Uh, we'll just compost that with Gibson and chicken slash. Yeah, okay, cool. Because you see that we don't have much of it. Excellent. Um, but yeah, wrap it up whole, nice bit of butter, lemon, yep. salt, and butter, bit of garlic with it. Cool. Um, when you're cooking it, this one probably is about 10 minutes aside. Um, I'll have a barbecue turn it aside, just 20 minutes while we have it. Yep. Um, so you can just turn the barbecue and split the time and do it each side. Yep, okay. Um, after you've cooked it, just hung up that foil, grab its front fin here, and you can peel off that whole skin layer. Once sure. you've done that, you'll right when this red line is in it skin here you'll see it in the flesh just peel down the fork against the flesh mm -hmm. with the same on the top side making sure you're in parallel with the bones so you're not sort of breaking across the bones getting yep. more than you meet okay. um, once you've done one side you just show it this line that has been bugging me grab its head yep. push its flesh up. down on the other side and you just peel the whole scale so filleting is a little different as well. You know, first cut, you take its collar in. Yeah. So you just go around that He's fin. Still alive. He's still alive. Just, to, just before the backbone. So once you get there, you try to bend your knife upwards. And you get nice and flat. So angling it into the skeleton still. So it's still just yeah. rise across the backbone. Mm -hmm. And then you flip it out and you go to the nice one. So if, if you go up here, it's just going to go into the meat and then you get it way yeah. right too early. Yeah. If you go down too hard, you just go straight through the spine. Once you go through the spine, it's a lot harder to sort of yeah. make a good fit yeah. like that. Yeah, yum. The second one, just do the same. You drop its head off the board so it gets a nice flat spine. If it's still on, it's just a little bit bent. Yeah. So you drop it off. Yeah. Makes it nice and flat, a little bit easier for us. 
and the collar again. So I do, so I just grab its head and use that as my lever, and I can sort of push the knife and pull the fish at the same time. What Will and the other bike do, they hold it here and ride this along there. Yeah. I feel like I'm yeah. going to cut myself when I do that. He sliced his hand open last week and had to get stitches. I just go like this, it does the exact same thing, gets it nice for it. You just got to make sure that you're getting all the meat on it. Yeah. There we are. Yeah. So on the way into Bright, we stopped at Pepo Farms, which is pumpkin seeds, and they're really good. Uh, we bought a, I bought a hot Cajun. We bought some pumpkin flour because it's got 49% protein in it, which will be good to make. And it's a thickener. And it's a thickener as well, so it might make me a bit smarter or less smarter <laughs> um, but we can put it in our stews and stuff like that instead of using corn flour and everything and what did you buy lightly salted pumpkin lightly seeds salted like yeah greetings so welcome to cooking, cooking. with Adam and Lee yeah. so, what we're doing is, uh, is uh, this, uh, I caught my trout and I caught a salmon for Lee so tonight we're doing the trout on the web up so the way he said to do it was just in a bit of foil with some lemon in it, stick the lemon in the belly, a little bit of butter, Bob's your uncle, oh and garlic. So we're going to get out my golden trout, it's quite, got a little bit of rigor mortis about him. A little bit. A little bit. Big bit. So whack him on there. So, Lee, can you... I can't. I'll have to do it. Oh. Okay, so... In the belly. Lemon in the guts. I reckon a bit of pepper in there would be good too, babe. Yeah? Yeah. Alright. Definitely a bit of pepper. Okay. Lemon in the guts. Bit of butter. Butter or margarine. Whatever you got, really. Whatever you got. And we need some garlic too. All right, we'll get some garlic. We'll get some garlic out. Hold on a minute. Garlic! Yeah. So you could use fresh garlic. Yeah, we don't have fresh garlic. We just got powdered We're garlic. We're budget. Budget. We are budget. So we've got uh, garlic. Garlic seasoning. In the belly. Yeah, in the guts. I reckon a bit over the top too. Oh, that'll do. Put a bit over the top. Why not? You peel that off anyway, so you yeah. don't you don't taste it. And that's Frank the Trout. Frank, poor Frank's been Poor old Frank got nailed yesterday by my expertise fishing skills. And then we'll wrap him up. Come back here. Pork chop. Make your little parcel. And out onto the barbecue. 20 minutes each side. All right, it's the moment of truth. <laughs> Can you just hold that and I'll grab the fish? Sure. Good old baker's hand still. It's burnt. No, it's not. Oh, look at that. So, the big test though is how does it go with the uh, Parramatta League's Jack's Pale Ale. So, let's get a bit of fish. The only thing that's annoying is the flies. Yeah. Goes good. Goes real good. Good morning. Uh, Lisa home with Alvin today. I've taken a drive up to Mount Buffalo. So, have a look at that. And that's about as far as I'll go. Oh no, let's go out there. Wow. Mm. 
what a view <laughs> so it took me about an hour to come up here there's heaps of bushwalks and everything I didn't realize there were that many bushwalks up here but just the view is just freaking amazing obviously you can abseil here we've got all the ropes and everything set up this is the chalet it was opened in 1910 it was i think the first sort of ski destination in victoria amazing I actually thought it'd be colder up here too, but it's not. It's quite pleasant. The views are unbelievable. I just, I, I love it down here. It's so good. That's the Mount Buffalo Chalet done. So I'm going to jump back in the car now and I'm going to go over and have a look at Lake Katani and the Horn. <laughs> um, yeah, so jump back in the car. That's uh, about 11 k's, I think, to the Horn. So we'll head over there and have a look. So... I've driven up to the horn now you can there is I've got pluggers on so I ain't doing it but you can walk all the way up to the top there and there's a lookout but I'm not doing it because of the pluggers but <laughs> you reckon the last view is epic have a look at that It's just, I don't know, you, you have no words for what it's like up here. Like, and the country changes so... I'm just watching where I'm going here because I'm walking over rocks. Country changes so quickly. So, you, you know, at the bottom of the mountain you're in, you know, eucalypts and stuff like that. And then you come up here and it's, it's barren with these big granite rocks and dead trees where you can see where the fires have come through. So it's... It's just awe-inspiring, really. And for, those, for those of you who wonder why we're doing what we're doing, this is the reason. Like, just go and do it. Like, study the whole boring everyday life. You never get to see, you're never going to get to see stuff like this. So this puts into perspective why we're doing what we're doing, because this is just bloody amazing. So get out there do it don't sit at home watch youtube and go oh one day i'm going to do it one day i'm going to do it get out there and do it because otherwise you're going to be too old or you're going to be too sore and you're never going to get to do it and then you go geez i wish i'd gone and seen that and geez i'd wish i'd done that and go and do it because this is the benefits of what we're doing it's just oh i love it love it love it love it Sit on the swing, honey. My fat ass would probably break it. Yeah, but it could be funny. Come on, funny YouTube. <laughs> Just for our benefit. So, like, there would be fine.
Happy Australia Day. Happy Australia Day. We haven't really filmed today because we've just been busy chilling out and doing mm, nothing. Pretty much. So laying we're just in the hammock. Laying in the hammock. I've been talking to everyone. Drunk six beers. Playing which is, some music. Yeah, we played some music we for everyone five, this morning. Five bucks. Got five dollars tips. Ooh, Enough that, to do a load of washing. <laughs> yeah. So what we're going to do now, we're just chilling by the fire. And then we are heading into Bright to have a look around tomorrow, even though we've already looked around. No and last year we did an episode in Bright, but we're going back to do the brewery again because the beer's awesome. And the coffee shop next and door. And the coffee shop next door. And we need to do some shopping and stuff as well. But anyway, happy Australia Day. We had happy the van. Enjoy your day. We had the van decked out with all our Australia flags. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, so this is us done today. And yeah. We're logging off. Logging off. See you down the road. Bye. Bit dusty coming into Stringy Bark <laughs> Creek, but the van handler, the road's really good. The road's very good. Um, about 11 k's from the Tolmy Road. Let's see how dusty she is inside. Mmm. This is our first uh, semi-off road with the van. Oh, no, she's good. We good. We're good. Oh, we've got one drawer popped out. This drawer, um, the latch is not great on, so we're going to have to fix that. And oh, the little latch on the cupboard's held. Very good. Very good. I think that when the cupboard opened before, though, I think that was we'd done the big shop, and a couple of tins had moved and popped the latch. Well, I think that's but, the same now. But yeah. Anyway, we're good. All right. See you soon. Alvin's well, it's pissing pouch. down rain. Alvin's pouch. So we're just going to do a little bit of a walking track so you can go down to where they had the shootout and there's a Village. memorial. And So as I was saying, <laughs> this is where they had the shootout. We're going to go for a walk. I ran out of battery before. So we're going for a walk to see where the shootout was. Gotta carry the dog. Welcome to Stingy Stringy Stingy <laughs> Stingy Bark Creek. Stingy Bark. Stringy Bark Creek. So this is where it all went to shit for Ned Kelly. So this is where he had the shootout, you know, him and his gang had the shootout with the three police. So two were killed here and one was killed a quarter of a mile. Constable away. Thomas Langland and Constable Michael Scanlon. It was Thomas Lonigan. Oh, right. However you pronounce it. Thomas Lonigan and Michael Scanlon were killed here. And then McIntyre was killed further away. And um, this incident led to Glen Rowan and where he finally got caught. So anyway, we'll go in. Yeah. Doing a hike in our pluggers. Yeah. 
not really a, really a hike though. It's um, no. nice, actually. it's quite nice coming through here. So we didn't have much rain last night, but it's raining today. So we were supposed to go to Mansfield yesterday, and they were full because there's a show and shine. So we came out here. We were going to come here after Mansfield, but it's only like I don't know half hour, forty minutes up the road. So we came here first. <laughs> My wristwatch is broken, my shoes are untied Time is a ticking, and so is the tide But I am not worrying, things are what they are Come rain or come shine or a shooting star I've been to the south, I've been to the north, east and the west, the middle of course. I may have been astray, but I've never been lost, I've never been beat by the road I've crossed. I guess I've been lucky. To some degree For someone who ate All the fruit from the tree The stars been aligned And my goose hanging high I'll be okay In the sweet by and by Yeah, it's just It's freaky to think though That that tree And like where we're walking Was where it all happened Like like yeah. years upon years, years upon of, years like ago. Two hundred, what is it? Nearly two hundred years. Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. It's, quite, it's such a great story to know, though. Yeah, and it's quite humbling to still be walking around here and knowing that yeah. you know this is where it all happened and everything. And you know, a few episodes ago, we actually um, visited Glen Rowan. Pardon me, Glen Rowan. Yeah. And uh, it's a great place to follow up or come before here. Yeah. And see some of the uh, um, statues and yeah. where the actual um, last capture. Yeah, his last stand. Uh, last stand, that's what it was, of Ned Kelly. Great places to visit and yeah. good history to uh, pass yeah. on. And, you know, you're sort of torn. Was he a hero, like I said in that episode? Was he, he Was he a hero? Was he a villain? I still sway towards cop killer. But you know, I just times, like the history. Times were different back then, so you know, you you don't know. Mm -hmm. You don't know the circumstances or stuff like that. But you know, a murderer is a murderer, I suppose, and he did kill many people. Yeah. And he was a thief, and he was, you know, but you know, that was the time and the, that stage of Australian history. So leave a comment below what you yeah. think. Was he a yeah. murderer or was he a hero? Yeah. Anyway, hopefully when we get to Melbourne, I'm going to take a day trip and go to Old Melbourne Jail where, you know, that was end game for him. So, anyway, Literally. we'll keep walking. It's starting to rain heavy. See, this is the chalet at the top of Mount Buffalo. So it was opened in 1910, so it's sort of the last... No, you're hanging up in the corner here. Like that? See how you've got our whole body? Yeah. If you tilt tilt the like that. Tilt the actual handle and thing. No, other like that. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Good morning. Oh. 